As you know that the earth has two types of motions namely rotation and revolution rotation is the movement of the earth on its axis the movement of the earth around the sun in a fixed path or orbit is called revolution the axis of the earth which is an imaginary line makes an angle of 66 and half degrees with its orbital plane the plane formed by the orbit is known as the orbital plane the earth receives light from the sun due to the spherical shape of the earth only half of it gets light from the sun at a time the portion facing the sun experiences day while the other half away from the sun experiences night the circle that divides the day from night on the globe is called the circle of illumination this circle does not coincide with the axis as you see in this figure the earth takes about 24 hours to complete one rotation around its axis the period of rotation is known as the earth day this is the daily motion of the earth what would happen if the earth did not rotate the portion of the earth facing the sun would always experience day thus bringing continuous warmth to the region the other half would remain in darkness and be freezing cold all the time life would not have been possible in such extreme conditions the second motion of the earth around the sun in its orbit is called revolution it takes 365 and 1/4 days which is one year to revolve around the sun we consider a year as consisting of 365 days only and ignore 6 hours for the sake of convenience 6 hours saved every year are added to make one day which is of 24 hours over a span of 4 years this surplus day is added to the month of february thus every fourth year february is of 29 days instead of 28 days such a year with 366 days is called a leap year find out when will the next leap year will be from the figure it is clear that the earth is going around the sun in an elliptical orbit notice that throughout its orbit the earth is inclined in the same direction a year is usually divided into summer winter spring and autumn seasons seasons change due to the change in the position of the earth around the sun look at this figure you will see that on 21st june the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun the rays of the sun fall directly on the tropic of cancer as a result these areas receive more heat the areas near the poles receive less heat as the rays of the sun are slanting the north pole is inclined towards the sun and the places beyond the arctic circle experiences continuous daylight for about 6 months since a large portion of the northern hemisphere is getting light from the sun it is summer in the regions north of the equator the longest day and the shortest night at these places occur on 21st june at this time in the southern hemisphere all these conditions are reversed It is winter season there. The nights are longer than the days. This position of the earth is called the summer solstice. On 22nd December, the tropic of Capricorn receives direct rays of the sun as the south pole tilted towards it. As the sun's rays fall vertically at the tropic of Capricorn, which is 23 and 1/2 degrees south, a large portion of the southern hemisphere gets light. Therefore it is summer in the southern hemisphere with longer days and shorter nights the reverse happens in the northern hemisphere this position of the earth is called the winter solstice do you know that christmas is celebrated in australia in the summer season on 21st march and september 23rd direct rays of the sun fall on the equator at this position neither the poles is tilted towards the sun so The whole earth experiences equal days and equal nights. This is called an equinox. On 23rd September, it is autumn season in the northern hemisphere and spring season in the southern hemisphere. The opposite is the case on 21st March 
when it is spring in the northern hemisphere and autumn in the southern hemisphere thus you find that there are days and nights and changes in the seasons because of the rotation and revolution of the earth respectively so thanks for watching see you in the next video